What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Torino Career Mode. This is episode number 72 and we start today's episode off with confirmation that Lazaro is going to be out for four weeks. He pulled his quad in that last game against Livorno which we won by five goals to nil and then a Mobile came to us and said he's not happy. Now I actually released an episode of Career Mode today, episode number 69 and a few of you guys have been commenting about the ridiculous nature of some players coming to us and complaining and not getting a team enough. And Mobile has been a first team striker all through the season yet he's still not happy that there are some games like the Livorno one which he missed out in it's like mate your replacement Zardes scored five goals in a single game and you got some valuable rest time for this absolutely huge game in the Derby della Mole against Juventus in the Serie A in a first versus third clash of course I was going to rest you for that game what are you expecting but either way you know we, we go on about it like a broken record sometimes but it's just because it's so simple for a player to be told why he's being rested and you know EA should easily implement that feature next season it would certainly be really beneficial to us uh, more experienced Karimo players if you will to make sure your players don't get upset every now and then uh, for you know less than valid reasons I suppose but regardless we do take on Juventus for the first game of today's episode on the back of an absolutely superb final victory against Livorno of course we did rest the team for that game so they would be fresh for this one so everyone was fully fit to start the game and the first chance would fall to us but Buffon made a really good save however in the 10th minute we would win ourselves a penalty through Hakan Shalanolu he took the, brow uh, take the ball round down David Alaba, the Austrian left back, who goes to ground and Shalanolu gets tripped up and the referee awards a penalty. I actually think Shalanolu could have got out of the way of it, to be honest, because Alaba goes to ground early and Shalanolu looks like he could go around the back of him and go on to run onto the ball, but instead he sort of dives over the top of Alaba. So it is a penalty, don't get me wrong, it's a definite penalty for clear contact and a needless slide challenge, but I think Shalanolu probably initiated it, let's just say that. Regardless, penalty to Torino and a great chance to take the lead. Sergio Aguero against Buffon and Aguero does score as well. He has been a superb striker since coming in in January and of course we thought that was going to be the case anyway. He arrives as an 89 uh, rated 28 year old the, uh, the replacement for Paolo Dybala, of course, who got sold to Barcelona for £66.6 .6 million. Aguero came in to replace him for 40, uh, £45 million. And he's just scoring goals left, right and centre. He's picked up a couple of assists as well. He's been a brilliant, brilliant player to come in and replace Dybala. And I was a little bit fearful that it would be a white elephant and a bit of a dud signing for us. Wouldn't score the goals and just wouldn't have his heart here in Torino knowing he's a better player than us. But either way, he's been an absolutely fantastic signing. There's another goal there. It's his seventh of the season. It's Torino 1 at Juventus 0. Bernie then had to make a good save here in the 16th minute to keep it at 1-0. Good stop there. And in the 18th minute, Sergio Aguero hunts down Chiellini, wins the ball back for us, takes it around his man, holds it up, finds Poloski. Poloski shoots from range, but he can't hit the target, and he goes behind for a goal kick. So still Torino 1, Juventus 0, but a lot of chances in the first half for us, but it was still 1-0. But in the 40th minute, five minutes for the, uh, the, uh, the break here, a good chance for Juventus to equalise. Carlos Tevez finds Vidal, and the Chilean finds Asamoa. Back inside towards the midfielder, Fernando Llorente gets onto it and finds Paul Pogba, and the former Manchester United midfielder can't hit the target and the Frenchman strike goes wide of the post so still Torino 1 Juventus 0 but Juventus trying to get themselves back in the game and back on level terms and from the goal kick we pass out from the back Vaselli finds Alexandra down the left hand side through towards Poloski he finds Gabbiadini off towards Hakan Shalanolu nice free ball towards the goal scorer Sergio Aguero plays it back inside towards Shalanolu holds it up but it goes to shoot as well good stop by Buffon but Gabbiadini gets on the end of the rebound and heads it in to make it Torino 2 Juventus 0 so Juventus you know I mentioned Juventus actually last season in uh, my PS4 career when I was managing Napoli. I've always found Juventus an easy side to play against despite their ability. I'm not sure why that is. But as you can see, Gabby Dini heads in this rebound, makes it 2-0 to Torino. And there's still a half of football to play, don't get me wrong. But they just weren't looking very good at the back at all. They were so easy to exploit. And as Baselli gets on the ball here 10 minutes after the restart, he slides it through towards Florenzi. And Florenzi chips the ball over Buffon and makes it Torino 3, Juventus 0. So he came off the bench at half half time uh, along with not sure who came on with him but Forenzi came on and uh, Gabby Dini and Aguero got replaced it might have possibly been I'm, I'm not too sure who it was but anyway Florenzi chipped it over Buffon a wonderful finish by Forenzi who I did decide to play as a striker since coming off the bench I thought his high high work rates would be really beneficial tracking back winning the ball back and also having the pace and the energy to make good forward runs as well and what a finish that is by Florenzi chip shots this year are apparently really OP I haven't used them too many times I scored a couple of nice chip goals 
goals. But that one, I thought I had a good chance to try it out here with two goals up. It's not a big deal if it goes wrong, but it goes over Buffon, sails over his head into the back of the net. And it's actually his first goal in the Serie A this year for Florenzi. This is not his best season by any stretch of imagination, although, of course, he has sort of lost his place a little bit to Clement Grenier. Still 3 0 3 Juventus nil. They had a chance for a consolation goal 10 minutes before the end, but Paul Pogba heads it over the bar and it goes behind for a goal kick. And it was how the game would finish. Torino 3, Juventus nil. That effectively puts Juventus out of the title race. Now, mathematically, yes, they can still catch up and they could definitely still spring a big surprise and run as close like they did, uh, relatively speaking, last season. But I think now that sort of killed them off a little bit. And I think it's going to be between us and second place Roma. So Juventus still mathematically in the title race, but I think their best chances of another trophy, because of course they have been knocked out in the TIM Cup semi-finals, is going to be in this competition because we are taking on Juventus for the Champions League semi-final first leg. Yes, we've been drawn against Juventus in the semi-finals. United take on Real Madrid. Of course, United knocked us out last season in the semis. Real Madrid, we uh, we faced them in the group stages. They topped the group. So a big, big game here against Juventus. Our second game against Juventus in just a few days. Taking on here away at the Juventus Stadium in the Champions League semi-final first leg. And the first chance would fall to us in the 23rd minute. Florenzi uh, crosses the corner and towards De Vrij. And the header goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still goals for the first chance coming to us. And a couple of minutes later, another good chance for us. Alexandra wins the ball back and finds a Mobley. And Mobley picks up Gabby Adini. But his shot is off target and behind for a goal kick. So still Juventus nil, Torino nil. First chance for Juventus came in the 34th minute as Isla goes down the right-hand side here. And a Chilean finds Tevez. Tevez turns his man, swings across into the centre. Vidal hits the bar. And then some very, very lucky defending. He does eventually get the ball away. But the Vry, the centre-back, deserves all the credit for this. Absolutely superb block. And as you can see, Danilo giving him a pat on the back. He certainly deserves it. As you can see, the ball gets played here towards the man, Storaro. And the Vry saves a certain goal of a big block. As it looked like the ball is going to go into the open goal. But still, Juventus nil, Torino nil. In the 43rd minute, another good chance for Juventus. Vidal shoots from just outside the area. But Bernie makes a good save. And Danilo gets the ball away. So still nil, nil going into the break. And five minutes after the restart, another good chance for Juventus. Morata goes through one on one. Bernie puts him off though, and a Spanish striker's shot goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick. But yet another good chance for Juventus just a few minutes later. Morata finds Paul Pogba. Pogba plays it through towards Carlos Tevez. The Argentine takes it on first time, but Bernie makes the save, and we get the ball away with Masaccio. So still nil nil, but just past Yalmark here, a good chance for us to take the lead. Gabby Dini goes forward and shoots here too, but Buffon makes a really good save and turns it behind for a corner. So still Juventus nil, Torino nil. But from the corner, Gabi Dini crosses the ball in, looks for De Vrij, heads it back towards Danilo, who takes a touch and shoots it on the half volley, but it goes over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So loads and loads of chances in this game, but it was still surprisingly goalless. Both teams had lots and lots of opportunities to grab themselves the first goal, but neither side was hitting the target on a lot of occasions. And there's Pogba going just close there, but behind for a goal kick. So still nil, nil. And in the 71st minute, another good chance for us. Danilo whips and across to the far post. Wonderful ball. And Moble wins the header. But again, the header is off target and behind for a goal kick. So still 0-0 in this game. It was looking like it was going to finish 0-0 because both teams are having chance after chance, but no one could hit the target. But it was still 0-0. But in the 74th minute, though, Paul Pogba gets onto the ball and swings it across after taking it around Danilo. Picks out Fernando Llorente and the Spanish striker heads it in and makes it Juventus 1 at Torino 0 with just over 15 minutes of play remaining. So 1-0 to Juventus. They finally take the lead. Fernando Llorente gets the goal. They had so many chances just like we did. They just weren't hitting the target and Bernie made a couple of good saves but for this one Bernie comes out, gets nowhere near it and it's a good header by Llorente into the back of the open goal and it's 1-0 to the home side. So Juventus take a lead in this game but 10 minutes later a good chance for us to equalise. Danilo our right back gets on the ball and finds Sergio Aguero. Scored against him on the weekend. Could he score here? Well he takes it around Bonucci. Drills in across towards Bernassi who fires the ball over and again we failed to hit the target. So still Juventus won Torino nil, and in the 88 minute how about this this was really close Shalanolu strike takes a deflection and whizzes just wide of the post a whisker away it shaves that post really and goes behind for a corner so very very close there Shalanolu the deflection off Chiellini almost found the back of the net I think it was Chiellini we went behind for a goal uh, a corner anyway but from the corner Shalanolu standing over it one of our final chances to grab ourselves a goal back in this game tie the game in the first leg and grab a crucial away goal Hakan swings in the corner picks out a Mobley and a Mobley heads it in and 
That makes it Juventus 1, Torino 1. So with just over a minute of normal time left, Shiro Immobile gets on the end of the Hakan Chalanolu cross, heads it past Buffon in the near post, and makes it Juventus 1, Torino 1. And we grab ourselves what could prove to be a crucial away goal. You guys know I am such a sucker for away goals. I think they are so important in European games and, well, any competition really in the knockout stages that count away goals. We get the away goal here. Buffon is beaten. Had a pretty solid game, to be honest. Made a couple of good saves and it was looking pretty good and uh, confident at the back. But regardless, Juventus 1, Torino 1 and Immobile heads it in to make sure we do grab ourselves a crucial, crucial away goal as we split the uh, the game in the first leg. So final score 1-1. We'll take it back to the Stadio Olimpico de Torino with that away goal. We've got the upper hand. Can't let it go now like we did last season with that same scoreline going into the second leg before United beat us 1-0 at our home. But regardless, that does end the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Torino Career Mode, then please do leave a like. It's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Torino Career Mode very soon.